Hey guys, good morning. What is up? Derek from Bomb Socks here. Good to be with you on another exciting episode of Bomb Bites. We are here to help you feast upon the words of Christ and we're going to do it one bite at a time. So today I want to focus on something that we all struggle with. I believe it is a universal struggle for all of us and it's found in uh, Mosiah chapter 9. So backing up, Mosiah 7 and 8 is more of the interaction between Limhi and Ammon and that's kind of real time. And what happens is as Ammon is explaining what has happened in Zarahemla, King Limhi says, okay, well, let me tell you about what has happened down here. And so we are introduced to a guy who is kind of a peripheral character in the Book of Mormon, but he's, there's a good little lesson with him, and his name is Zenith. And Zenith is Limhi's grandfather. So you got Zenith, his son Noah, and then his son Limhi. So this is Limhi's grandpa. And so he talks about, and this goes back to the book of Omni, where there's a group of individuals who go back from Zarahemla to the land of Lehi-Nephi, and they want to... Uh, reestablish themselves in that land. They want to be able to take the land of their inheritance over. So this is Zenith. So chapter 9 verse 1 starts off and it says, I, Zenith, have been taught in the language of the uh, Nephites, having a knowledge of the land of Nephi, or the land of our father's first inheritance, and having been sent as a spy among the Lamanites, that I might spy out their forces, that our army might come upon them and destroy them. So again, the goal is to get into that land again and possess that land. In order to do it, you got to go through those Lamanites. This is an interesting statement right here. He says, but when I saw that which was good among them, I was desirous that they shouldn't be destroyed. So I don't know what happened. I don't know if he saw young Lamanite kids playing or families, but for some reason or another, Zenith kind of became a, a soft-hearted guy at that point. He's just like, I don't know. I don't. They don't need to be destroyed, but keeping in mind, they are the enemy. And in order to inhabit that land, you've got to get through them. And so he goes back to his people and he just says, ah, guys, we don't need to destroy them. Their leader at the time, it says he was an austere and a bloodthirsty man. Those are not good combinations. And anyway, he said, let's kill Zenith. And so there becomes this little... I mean, it's a war where they basically destroy one another, except for a few. And so Zenith takes, Zenith's able to live, and he goes back to Zarahemla, and it says, we, uh, he says, we relate that tale to their wives and their children. Just a sad situation right there that started. Zenith saw some good, didn't want him to be destroyed. The other guy was, no, we're here to kill them. And so it's kind of a rough situation. But here's where Zenith, um, has a, what I would call a character flaw that we all struggle with. He says this in verse three, and yet I being overzealous to inherit the land of our fathers, collected as many as were desirous to go up and possess the land. And we started our journey and we went back. And it says there, we were smitten with famine and sore afflictions for we were slow to remember the Lord, our God. And so with that said, I don't think Zenith is a bad guy. I don't look at him as a wicked individual. Uh, overzealous is an interesting word, and I think overzealous is something that we all get at certain points in our lives with something that we are passionate about. When we have zeal, we are, we're excited, we're courageous, we're, and, and those are great qualities to have, but it's when we get overzealous, that's where the problems happen, and we, we focus so much on our excitement for the thing that we forget, and like Zenith said, we're slow to remember the Lord our God. And here's the problem also with Zenith. If you go back to Omni, he's described also as a strong and mighty man and a stiff-necked man. So when you're combining, he's strong and mighty, he's a good guy, um, but he's also stubborn and he's also overzealous. And I started thinking about some of these potential dangers in someone who is forceful, passionate, enthusiastic, stubborn, and overzealous. That's not always the best of combinations. And I think sometimes we all get involved with that. And it's easy to point out in other people, but oftentimes we look at ourselves and I think a lot of times that comes into us. For example, a little overzealousness happened with me just yesterday. And I get that way with when you're, when you're passionate about something. Like for example, during this coronavirus time, we've been looking in our backyard and we've been trying to make our backyard a little bit more of a fun little adventure place for our kids. And, and we created this little 
little area. It's kind of this little oasis where we've got a fire pit and we've got some swings and we've got some lights draped around it. And it's just been kind of a fun little hangout for our kids. And me, wanting to make it a little bit cooler, I went and got some tiki torches, ordered them on Amazon, picked them up right there. And I thought, oh, these would be the cool little addition to them. I saw pictures where people had done this. And so the torches came and I went and I opened them right up and I took them and I saw the instructions and I was like, yeah, they're tiki torches. How hard are they? And so I went out and I started putting them into the ground and my wonderful wife, she said, hey, so do you know how far into the ground those are supposed to go? And I was like, I don't, a little bit. And she goes, I just looked at the instructions. They're supposed to be six inches. I'm like, okay, sure. And I just put them in there like that. And she said, do you know that they're supposed to be six feet away from other things? I'm like, oh, these are fine. I'm looking, you know, in my excitement to put them in, I was totally disregarding the instructions on how to do it. And so I'm putting them in the ground and everything and, and screwing them in there. And, and at night last night, we were just getting some things ready in the yard. And I went to go get the oil because I wanted to light the lamps because I wanted to see fire. And so anyway, I put the, the uh, I just poured it right in there. And she goes, do you know much how, you know how much is supposed to go in there? And I said, I, I don't know. I imagine this much. She goes, well, make sure you fill it to here. I'm like, okay. And so I, I filled them up and, and put the, the wick into there and I automatically started lighting the, the wick and it wasn't working. And she said, the instruction says you do need to wait for it. And I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll wait. And so again, you can see what's going on here. My overzealousness, I was slow to remember the instructions. Now, fortunately, nothing bad happened. Um, However, what it, the, I guess the worst thing that had happened is, is I was able to get the torches lit, but I started noticing that th those flames get really high and it was emitting off some smoke and our lights, the, some of those outdoor solar lights that we had, they look really cool. Um, they were starting to flicker a little bit. And my wife said, I wonder why those are flickering. And I was like, oh, it's fine. I'm sure they're great. And what had happened is that smoke was affecting those lights. And so ultimately, Tiki torches was not a good idea. They looked cool, but in my overzealousness, I neglected all of the instructions and we figured, and I listened to my wife. This is where I was not slow to remember what she said. I did listen to her. And uh, anyway, we, we snuffed out the, the torches and we figured we're going to put them somewhere else or take them back. Uh, and so again, not, nothing really life altering there, but again, oftentimes in our overzeal, we forget to, uh, we forget those things that are important right there. Now, what happens with Zenith is they get there and what happens is they end up getting captured by the Lamanite king and they end up in servitude, which happens for the next several generations right there. But as they are there, here's where I guess the antidote to being overzealous. You go down to verses 17 and 18. It says, yea, and, and the people were looking to him and they were starting to fight against the Lamanites. He said, in the strength of the Lord, we did go forth into battle against the Lamanites. And for I and my people did cry mightily to the Lord that he would deliver us out of the hands of our enemies. For we were awakened to a remembrance of the deliverance of our fathers. And God did hear our cries and did answer our prayers and we did go forth in his might. So as they remembered the Lord, that's where they were able to have success. So with me and the tiki torches, if I was, if I would have looked at the instructions, I probably would have realized, ah, I mean, this might not be the best of ideas. But in my excitement, I moved forward with it, with zeal and excitement, over zeal. And again, you saw, ended up what happened there. Um, one of the coolest verses, I think, that helps explain all this, if you go back to King Benjamin's address. Now, King Benjamin in chapter 4 said this. This is chapter 4, verse 27. He said, And see that all these things are done in wisdom and order. For it is not requisite that a man should run faster than he has strength. And again, it is expedient that he should be diligent, that there might he, thereby he might win the prize. Therefore, all things must be done in order. So I love that idea of making sure that you remember the Lord and you read the instructions because if not, you go forward in your overzealousness and that's where you can get into a little bit of trouble. So anyway, hope that message helps you a little bit right there. By the way, if anybody needs any tiki torches, let me know. I got four of them. You guys have an amazing day. Godspeed and be safe today. Have a good day. Bye-bye.